Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today, my favorite topic, well, I have so many favorite topics in algebraic geometry, it's not totally odd. A favorite topic of mine, uh, light cones. So something like, there's some light source, there's some cones somewhere, and we put it on a wall, uh, and then we create, I have much better illustration in a second, a certain kind of uh, light uh, on the wall. And the formula we have, calling this is probably they're usually called conic sections we'll see what it is and they're kind of the starting point of what really algebraic geometry is all about uh, so algebraic geometry if you want is a generalization of this idea of conic sections so um we will see degree two today degree zero points not exciting degree one linear linear algebra not really what algebraic geometry will study and degree two is already exciting and as I said, essentially everything we'll see should be thought of as a generalization of what I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, so let's have a look. So here's a much better picture, by the way, uh, which you can just find by asking Dr. Google and looking for images. Um, so those two people here, they have a really good, cool idea. They take a flashlight and they project it onto, well, this was a really bad drawing, onto the wall. And what you get out of this is called a conic section. So here's a much better picture. So if you hold your flashlight like straight to the wall, you get a circle. If it's lightly tilted, you get an ellipse. Um, at one point you get a parabola, and if you tilt even more, you get a hyperbola. And yeah, so that's pretty cool actually. You should try that yourself. And if I would be a real human being, then I would have a, an illustration like going on right now. Um, but I just decided to just steal the pictures from Google, from Dr. Google. Um, anyway. So let's have a look at those. So I will identify those two together. You will see in a second why, or not, maybe not in a second, you will see later why. So um, a circle is just a special case of an ellipse, and we really only have three different cases, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And yeah, so those guys are great. Everyone lo loves them. Um, probably not everyone likes them, but if you made it this far into this video, into this v series, I'm pretty sure you have some feelings for a circle. I have a lot of feelings for a circle. Dear circle, I really like you a lot. And yeah, well, those guys are known for a long time. So um, the earliest reference I found was something like 300 BC. So the old Greeks, essentially. Uh, but it's probably well known for much longer. Maybe except the flashlight part. So the idea, I, I don't actually know who came up with this idea of doing this with the flashlight. But I'm pretty sure the old Greeks didn't do that. The more classical picture that you might have seen is well, conic section, right? So there's kind of, there's a conic somewhere, a cone somewhere, and you do have some uh, wall that dissect, dissects it. So in my picture before, the cone itself was a light cone, and the hyperplane here is the wall. And whatever you do, you get our little friends up here. Remember that I identify those two, uh, up to some degenerate cases that I'm coming back later. So if here, for example, your, <laughs> your light source is in the wall itself, uh, you won't see that much of an exciting thing going on. Uh, in this case, uh, the intersection will just be uh, a point. And yeah, so up to some degenerate cases, we see our best friends again, uh, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And the main question is, what on earth do those guys have to do with algebraic geometry? So why are you even bothering with those? Yeah, sure, they are fine. Everyone likes them. As I said, probably not everyone likes them. But if you made it this far into this series, hope you will like some. Anyway, um, but what, what do they have to do with algebraic geometry, right? So that's kind of the, the main question. And it's really simple. So let me just uh, pull up Mathematica. So the picture you see is just Mathematica anyway. So I can just make it a bit bigger. So I set up a function with six variables, which are really just called A, B, C, D, E, F. And I have this polynomial equation. Yeah, there you go. Algebraic geometry, polynomial equations in two variables, x and y, and it's of degree two. So here's the degree two part, and then there's some linear part, but degree two just means not more than degree two, and you definitely have something of degree two. So I have this degree two equation um, in those six variables, and I just plot what's going on. So contour plot is just like, like the level sets of what's going on, and if you do that, for example, you get this one, uh, you can modify that a little bit, maybe make a minus here, maybe make a zero here, maybe make a whatever zero here and you'll see what happens and all of these will be 
type of conic sections. Maybe a little bit of an, a, a nicer one would be something like one here, one here, zero here, zero here, and one here. So let's see what that gives. That gives an empty picture. And why does it give an empty picture? Because secretly I'm working over the complex numbers and some solutions that do not exist over the real numbers. But let me make it a little bit more nicer and nicer so that we get a, a nice real solution, which in this case is a circle. So let me go back to the slides. So that's essentially what is happening on the slides here. I have this equation that I call star with A, B, C, D, E, and F. And our circle was the one I just had. And if you add by, by coincident, by accident, put a plus here, you don't get real solutions. Keep that in mind while that's kind of one of the main reasons we eventually or kind of always work over the complex numbers because we really want solutions for our polynomials. Anyway, in this case, it doesn't really matter. This is our generic degree two equation, right? This is exactly degree two equation and you just write down generic parameters. And yeah, so all of our friends, you can just check that by just listing them. I'll show you a smarter way in a second. All of our friends, the conic sections are degree two equations or degree two polynomial equations. In more algebraic geometry terms words, all affine varieties, the zero sets of our polynomials of degree two are conic sections and the converse is also true counting the degenerations as conic sections as well and the way to check that is actually pretty nice and i would like to mention that so this is what something called the people call the conic matrix it's this thing m here it just has all the variables um if you have an off diagonal you just divide by two to have the symmetry uh of the matrix fine and you can check so v was our def uh, notation for an affine variety so the zero set of and star is the equation. So that guy is degenerate if and only if, very easy to check, the de determinant of the matrix is zero. Yeah, fine, easy to check. So let's say it's not zero. Let's talk about the uh, degenerate cases in a second. Then you look at this top corner matrix here, and uh, it's down here. So the matrix one, two, if you want, the top corner matrix. Um, and you just have our favorite three cases, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola, depending on what the determinant of that little upper case is. So if the determinant is positive, you have an ellipse. If the determinant is zero, you have a parabola. And if the determinant is negative, you have an hyperbola. And this gives a complete classification of conic sections in terms of uh, algebraic geometry, in terms of what we try to understand here as zero sets of polynomials. And I feel like this is a really, really nice solution. And in some sense, Everything that is happening in algebraic geometry is some generalization of this. Sure, eventually generalization will be so abstract that you can't really tell anymore, but it's definitely good to keep those examples in mind. Kind of conic sections, really important and beautiful, not just important, also very beautiful. So let's at least talk a little bit about the uh, degenerate cases. Um, yeah, so what happens in the degenerate cases? Well, they turn up, as I said, and the matrix here has a determinant zero, but you can easily check kind of fun fact about the degenerate cases. We will see that later in the generalization. So here are some degenerate cases and they all work in the same way. So I focus on the interesting, on the interesting one. I focus on one of them. They're all equally interesting like this one. And it turns out that in this case, our equation star, which is kind of this generic equation, it factors. It factors into a linear, two, two linear factors, two degree one factors, right? The degree two factor factors into two, two degree one factors. And these are exactly our little friends here. So if, if I make this one blue, this is like is the x equals y case. So it should be like this line here. And let's make the other one, uh, what is a good color? Green, maybe. Um, so this is the other case. So the algebraic variety, the zero set, the plot factors into two uh, linear things. And that's essentially why it degenerates, because it's not really degree two. It's somewhat degree degree one twice. And this is an if and only if. So the degenerate cases are the ones that factor. And this gives us an idea how to define later what degenerate should be. It should be some kind of factoring property of a polynomial. And the whole idea of algebraic geometry eventually will be anyway to put the geometric uh, kind of properties into algebraic terms because algebra is like easier than geometry and we are trying to understand geometry uh, by algebra. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.